really fun traditional ferment today. The hot cousin of sauerkraut, sour Reuben, fermented turnips. So many fun things that you can do with this. Turnips are great. I don't think we eat enough of them. I'm going to show you two different ways to ferment the turnips. It's really easy, just like sauerkraut, and two different garnish examples and a couple different shapes that you can uh, do too. And there's all kinds of types of turnips you can use. They vary in sweetness. Scarlet turnips are the sweetest. Golds are in the middle. Purple top turnips are the least sweet. First thing I'm going to do is trim up my turnips. You can see that I'm removing all of the purple skin there. So the purple skin, if I leave it on, I'm going to cut these into a really fine julienne. If I leave the skin on, it's going to discolor in the brine and it would just not be nice and pure white. And I want it nice and pure white, like snow white slaw, fermented slaw. Shave them on a mandolin. Then we're going to cut some like inch and a half matchsticks or whatever length you like. And you can do so many different shapes with turnips compared to cabbage. That's one of the really fun things about this. You can do half turnip slices like that, or you can ferment the whole slices like I have right there. Uh, I do almost kind of like a noodle too, like a half inch ribbon is really fun. I'll show you those at the end. So for the first batch of the julienne ferment, I'm gonna add a little bit of jalapeno as a garnish and we're gonna vacuum seal this one. For the second batch, I'm gonna add a little bit of julienne Meyer lemon zest. And this one, we're going to ferment in a jar in brine. I really love the Meyer lemon zest in it. I think I like it more than the jalapeno, even though both are great. But if I was pressed, the little pop of lemon is just so good. It doesn't get bitter, it's really, really good. Especially when you get some herbs in at the end, when you're serving it. So for the Fermenting in brine, I'm gonna mix all of the turnip matchsticks and lemon zest, pack them into a quart jar. You can probably fit about 12 to 14 ounces uh, in a quart jar, probably be about a pound of raw turnips. Pack them down, put a weight on them, or use an airlock lid or whatever you like to use. Then I'm gonna add some 5% brine. That's five grams of salt in every 100 grams of water dissolved. Let it sit out. For the vacuum fermentation, I'm gonna take a vacuum bag and I have the second version I've seasoned with 3% of its weight in salt for the vacuum. That's the one with the jalapeno in it. Then I'm just gonna vacuum seal that quickly. I don't wanna let that sit because the salt is gonna draw the water out of the turnips. It'll make it harder to seal. Seal doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be reasonably good. And then I'm gonna let that sit after about a week, depending on your ambient temperature the bag is gonna fill with carbon dioxide and you're gonna to need to remove that. I've never had a bag blow up, but as you'll see, there can be some, you can have some issues with it. Uh, this is probably the worst thing that's ever happened and it's not that bad. I left it in for fun. First, I need to have the camera focused, but then you can see the juice comes down and that carbon dioxide wants to come out and there's fermented turnip juice everywhere. So it's no big deal, just clean it up reseal the bag, and then two weeks later, or a week later, two weeks total, or whenever it tastes good to you, it's all ready to go. So finally, I fermented some uh, kind of the noodle shape too, and this is one of my favorite ways to serve that shape is half fresh shaved turnip noodles, half fermented turnip noodles, and then a good handful of crisp baking apple and I put it in a pan with a little bit of wine and some butter. And right now I only have the turnips and the apples cooking. I'm gonna cook those until they're just about tender and then I'm gonna add the fermented turnip strips right in the middle. And then I'll add some wine, a splash of stock, make sure to season it. There's the fermented turnips just went in and then I finish it with a little bit of butter and some fresh dill and this is one of my favorite things to do with ferment, like almost any fermented kind of root like that. And here's my chacrut garni. This picture's like eight years old. That's three different types of preserved pork and cabbage. The stuff's also great in soups, like spicy ones with a little sausage, think kind of goulash style, and just as an all-purpose side dish. There again, can you tell I like apples with pork? I love it. 
Well, I hope I've inspired you to maybe think a little bit differently about turnips. Uh, if you try it, let me know. Thanks for watching.